Today we're handing over to Calvin Serrano, a VFX artist from Germany who helped us on Rise of the Dark Side. This is part two of the tutorial, so if you missed part one, check the card on screen. In this tutorial, Calvin's going to show you how he brought the simulation into HitFilm to finish the composite. Welcome to the fourth throw HitFilm tutorial. I will show you how to composite our 3D rendered rectal effect into the footage. First, let's import all the footage we have. I have a cut down version of the shot that Javert gave me and a clean plate we took on set. We will need the clean plate to paint out Ollie later on. Let's create a composite shot out of the footage. First off, I will duplicate the layer with Ctrl D and call the duplicate Foreground Roto. Now we will trim the foreground roto to just the part that we need. We really just have to roto out Ollie when he's crossing our main actor right here. We will use the first frame when he enters the left side of the frame. Right here. And then for the last. And then the last one is this one. When he hides behind her hood and doesn't re-enter the frame. So like this. Now go to effects and add Mocha hit film. Open it up and press launch Mocha UI. We will roto out the parts of her that are in front of Ollie, so we can use the clean plate behind her instead. I will go quickly through this process, but there is an in-depth tutorial that Javert did about rotoscoping with Mocha. The link to that is in the video description. Let's start with her hand. Pressing Z you can zoom in and out on objects, and with the middle mouse button you can pan around. Let's choose the X spline tool and draw a rough shape around her hand. When that is done, we can press the track forward button right here. Alright, that looks good. Let's track it backwards too. That looks fine to me. Let's leave it like this for now. When you're happy with it, you can lock the layer right here. You can also scroll through time with the mouse wheel, like this. Let's continue with her shoulder. You can push in these blue handles to make the curve softer. This didn't quite work out, so we will adjust it over time. Alright, this should be fine, let's lock it. For these leather ropes I will use the linking feature. For that I will choose the hand mask as a parent, so in this case layer 2. Let's select our new mask and select layer 2 on link to track. Now it will follow the transformations of the other mask. And we can add new keyframes over time. In this case the tracking doesn't properly work because Mocha doesn't have enough information to work with. So I will link it to another layer again. For this case I'll use this big layer right here, that's called layer 11. Alright, this should be fine. Let's save it and then close the UI. Now in the Mocha HitFilm properties under Matte, press Apply Matte. And now if we disable the lower layer, we can see the matte applied to the footage. Let us feather it a little bit. I'll just put in one, that should be fine. Okay, deactivate the rotor for now. Activate the footage again. We will now drop in our clean plate. Drop it between the rotor and the footage. Now go into controls, transform and lower the opacity to 50%. I will use the arrow keys now to line it up perfectly. This looks good to me. Turn it back up to 100% and now hide it again. With the clean plate selected, I will now draw a rotor mask around Ollie on the frame where he is supposed to fly off. Open up the mask properties, transform and activate path keyframing. Let's go forward a few frames and adjust the mask. We still want to keep the gun falling, so make sure to mask around it. You can also trim the clean plate to the first frame where it starts. So right around here. Now I will add some rough shapes around Ollie where he is crossing our actress. Now let's activate it and see how it looks. 
activate the foreground rotor too. We do see a slight movement, so I will try to readjust the position to have it more seamless. I would say this is looking good. Now it's time to drop in our 3D render. For that, go into Import, Image Sequence and select the folder where your image sequence is in. Make sure your imported image sequence uses the same frames per second as your footage. Drop it in and time it correctly. I will deactivate the mocker layer while we are working on the rest. I think this is looking good time-wise. We will now add some masks to the ragdoll for the parts where it's behind an object, like the tree right here and the tree and leaves right here. Select the ragdoll layer and draw a mask around the tree where it's crossing the ragdoll. You also want to invert the first mask right here and feather it just a tiny bit. Let's do the same for the second tree. For the second mask we have to select Subtract instead of Add now. I will also mask out some of these leaves here. Alright, this is looking quite good I think. Now let's do some color correction to the rectal, so the transition is more seamless. For that I will go to a frame where we can see Ollie clearly and I will drop another copy of the rectal Ollie onto the timeline and place it besides Ollie. Now let's add a few effects. Pin down the search menu right here to add multiple effects in a row. So first the color temperature effect, then saturation, curves and blur. Deactivate them all except temperature and let's dial this in first. Let's make it a bit cooler. Yeah, I think this is fine. Alright, let's go into hue saturation. Turn down the saturation a little bit. Yeah, a little bit like this. Alright, let's go into curves. I think we have to adjust the highlights a little bit. So let's pull this down here. Yeah, like this. Maybe pushing up the blacks a little bit. Yeah, I think this is fine. And then also blur it just a little bit. Let's try one pixel. That's still too much. Let's try 0.2. That's fine, yeah. Now copy and paste these effects onto the real layer. You can delete the old layer now. Now the transition is much more seamless. The next step is to connect the 3D render more with the environment by adding shadows, impacts and particle simulations. The first thing I want to do is to add some shadows to the tree right here when he's touching it. For that I will duplicate the rectal and call the duplicate rectal shadow. Put it below the original one and add the effect drop shadow. You can also delete the other effects from this one. I'm going to enhance the penumbra to make it more blurry. And I will draw a rough mask around the tree to have the shadow just on the tree. Delete the other masks of course. Now I will animate the opacity value, increasing it when he's right at the tree and then have it fade off again when he's flying away. We also want some dust when he hits the tree right here. So I'm going to search for the dust puff. It's a preset that's already installed in HitFilm and we can use this one for that interaction. Drop it between the render and the shadow and move it to the right position. We want to make it a bit smaller by changing the scale in the transform settings. and also lower the opacity down a little bit. Now go into the emitter. Since this is a mobile emitter system, you want to open the particle system inside of the mobile emitter. 
Select this particle system right here and open the lifetime controls. Here in color, you should see this color right here. You can just drag and drop this icon onto the tree to copy its color. I'm going to decrease the opacity even a bit more. And I'll also make it a bit smaller still. Yeah, I think this looks fine. Let's add another preset. This time the bullet spark. Also activate motion blur on the bullet sparks. We want to change speed and direction of these a little bit. So open up the trajectory and make them shoot off to the right side. You can also increase the radius to have them spread more. Go into the particle system and the movement. Change the speed to something way lower, like 500. I would go even a bit slower, let's do 300. Also increase the lifetime to something way bigger, like 5 seconds. You can see them just flying off into every direction. We want to give them gravity, so go down to forces and just add one. This will automatically add a gravity force. Let's also change their color. Go into appearance and with the color picker right here, just drop it on the tree. You can also lower the alpha boost to have them look more transparent. I will also decrease the size of the whole particle system to make it more subtle. I will also duplicate the dust puffs and use them at the moment where he's lifting off. So this frame right here. Let's duplicate it. Move it to that frame. I will adjust it the same way I did the other effects before. And I'll make it very subtle by putting the opacity on something very low. I also created a little particle system for the leaves in the final shot. I'll show you how to do that now. Create a new composite shot from the clean plate and call it something like leaves. And put the time on 5 frames. Press OK. Go into the controls of the clean plate and change the anchor point to a place where the leaves are that you want to use. I will use some of the leaves of this bush right here. Click on this icon right here and change the size to 20 by 20. Now cut this layer at every frame. Select the first one and move it to a position where we can see a leaf, like this right here. And then just rotate it out, very roughly. Alright, close this again and open up the main comp. Now drag and drop the leaves comp to the bottom and hide it. We will now add a new particle system. Open the controls. And in appearance, source texture, choose layer and choose the leaves layer. Also select random at frame. This way it will pick a random leaf for every particle. Under color source, choose texture color. And in appearance variation, under texture angle put in one time. And under texture angle per second also put in one time. So we will have some variation in the particles. We will also add some forces now. Press the plus button two times. It will add one force that acts like a gravity. And for the second one, choose turbulence. And change the strength to five. Now go to the first frame of the simulation. Under general right here, activate keyframing for particles per second. Put in a higher number like 200. Go forward two frames or let's go three frames and put in zero. This way we will only spawn leaves at the beginning. You can also activate motion blur for this layer. Let's go to the time where he's passing the bush and move the particle system there too. Let's change the shape to sphere and increase its size a little bit. In trajectory, choose cone, go back down to movement and increase the speed. 
Also make sure to go to movement variation and change the speed here too, so we get a variety of speeds in the particles. We can change the trajectory of the particles here. Let's also increase the radio so they spread more. I will also increase the speed and speed variation a little bit. I think I'll make them a tiny bit smaller right here in movement. I think I'll also decrease the amount of particles of the leaves a little bit again. Let's go 400. And also make sure it's behind the rectal. I think this is a good amount of interaction. You can of course extend this to your liking, but I'm fine with this. Go ahead and activate the foreground rotor again. So we have the finished shot. Now we are going to add some realistic camera motion to this shot. To get the realistic camera motion I printed out a frame of the video and added the grid to it. That way we can track a point and have a realistic camera motion. So import this footage, make a composite shot and press OK. Now import the force throw composite shot and press right click on it and pre-render it. This way we can work better with it later on. Hide it for now. And now we're going to track this. I think I like this part here. So yeah, cut out the part that you like for tracking. Go to new layer and add a point. We will call this one track. Open up the controls panel with the footage selected and create a new track. Make sure that you track a point that is visible throughout the whole shot. In this case, I'll use this part of the grid right here. Under the tracking settings, make sure to change optical flow to template match and then track forward. It worked out perfectly. So now we can select the track point right here and apply the information. Back in the viewer, we can activate our composite shot again and deactivate the footage. Parent the composite shot to the track point and see what happens. Alright, the timing is a little bit off, so let's go to the point where he's being thrown and move the track point to the right position too. So a little bit like this. Yeah, now we have to increase the scale of the footage in a way that it fits the screen the whole time. You can also add some keyframes to the composite shot to have it fit better. I will add a little punch in at the beginning. You can also activate motion blur on the composite shot to have the camera move even more realistic. So yeah, this was my first thought tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. It was a blast being on set with them and working on these VFX shots. See you soon, goodbye! If you missed the other Rise of the Dark Side tutorials, you can find them in the playlist on screen. Be sure to subscribe for more VFX tutorials, and we'll see you all in the next video.